Well, good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer and it's lovely to have you join me today. As part of my Easter reading, I am reading Paula Gooder's book, uh, This Risen Existence, and I thought I would share some of that reading with you. Paula writes, Resurrection is one of those words that always gives me the sneaking sense that I haven't really understood it. The feeling probably reaches back to my childhood, to the, to the time before I realised that Jesus being risen from the dead and Jesus' resurrection were in fact the same thing. Whenever people talked about resurrection, I assumed that it was something he did in addition to rising from the dead, though I could never work out what it might be. Then one glorious day, I finally realised that resurrection was not as complicated as I thought, and that it referred to Jesus rising from the dead, something which, oddly enough, seemed much easier to comprehend. Nevertheless, the older I get, the more I wonder whether my childhood self was in fact right, and that resurrection is indeed more complicated. Of course, it refers to Jesus rising from the dead, but what is harder to understand is what this meant and continues to mean. On the simplest levels, Jesus' resurrection is straightforward good news. Jesus was dead, now he is alive. This simple but mind-blowing fact remains at the heart of the resurrection, but there is more to it than that. Jesus' resurrection points to a new way of looking at the world, a new way of being that changes who we are and how we live in the world. This opening reflection on resurrection explores a few of the key themes and attempts to capture some of the profoundity of what believing in the resurrection might mean and what difference it might make to the way in which we live day to day. One of my favourite times of the year is spring. I love that feeling of the stirrings of new life that arise when first the tiniest spring flowers like snowdrops or aconites find their way through the winter frosts to be followed by crocuses, daffodils and apple blossom. Our local park has bank upon bank of crocuses and when I see them the biting wind feels cold, the rain less endless and I start looking forward to warmer times and new life. On one level nothing has changed, but on another it feels as though I have been granted permission to look forward to sunnier and warmer days. There is something in the human psyche that responds to new life. Many people will pause to coo over a baby, a puppy, a kitten, in fact anything that is newborn. There are many scientific explanations of why we are so drawn to newness, but part of it must be that it gives us a sense of hope, of life beyond the grim realities of the everyday of a future. In some ways the resurrection of Jesus chimes in with this response to new life. Just as spring flowers intimate that winter is passing and summer is round the corner, so also Jesus' resurrection points us to the fact that the old order is passing and new creation is just about to happen. There is a problem, however, with the analogy between Jesus' resurrection and spring flowers that we should not overlook. Those crocuses I love so much will die before summer has even arrived and will only have life once more the following spring. Spring flowers suggest resurrection to us, but only partially. The major difference between their rising to new life and Jesus' rising is that their new life is cyclical, interwoven with death, whereas Jesus's is not. Jesus rose to new life and will never die again. When teaching in theological college, I would regularly get into arguments with my students over how unique Jesus's resurrection was. The conversation would go something like this. I would say Jesus' resurrection was entirely unique. Nothing like it had ever happened before, nor afterwards. Without fail, someone would respond, Ah, but what about the widow of Nain? And what about Lazarus? And tension would rise in the room, since there is nothing a student enjoys more than proving their lecturer is wrong. I maintained then, and I still maintain now, that my original statement is correct. The difference between what happened to Jesus and what happened to Lazarus is vast, 
because just like the spring flowers, Lazarus died again and awaits another resurrection. Jesus did not die again, nor ever will. Jesus rose not to the same life as Lazarus did, but to a different life in which death no longer features. Technically, what happened to Lazarus was not resurrection, but revivication. It is a picky point, but an important one, and begins to open up the question of the something more of the resurrection. Jesus' resurrection is more than just that he was dead and is now alive, since this could be said of Lazarus and many others who were miraculously raised in the Bible. What is more about Jesus' resurrection is that he will never, ever die again. Heaven is both present and future. As you walk along your life path holding my hand, you are already in touch with the essence of heaven being near to me. You can also find many hints of heaven along your pathway because the earth is radiant alive with my presence. Shimmering sunshine awakens your heart, gently reminding you of my brilliant light. Birds and flowers, trees and skies evoke praises to my holy name. Keep your eyes and your ears fully open as you journey with me. At the end of your life path is an entrance to heaven. Only I know when you will reach that destination, but I am preparing you for it each step of the way. The absolute certainty of your heavenly home gives you peace and joy to help you along your journey. You know that you will reach your home in my perfect time, not one moment too soon or too late. So let the hope of heaven encourage you as you walk along the path of life with me. Words from Jesus Calling O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, Rejoice in this new day that you have made, and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so our psalm today is Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me, and he delivered me from all of my fears. Look upon him and be radiant, and your faces shall not be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious, Blessed is the one who trusts in him. Fear the Lord, or you his holy ones, for those who fear him lack nothing. Lions may lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, my children, and listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is there who delights in life and longs for days to enjoy good things? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. 
seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but from them all the Lord will deliver them. He keeps all their bones, so that not one of them is broken. But evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and will condemn none who seek refuge in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, beginning at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all people, for the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and with supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, my brothers and sisters, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely and of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And today's canticle. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils the sea covered them, they sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed, and by your invincible strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so our second reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and he stood in the midst of them and said, Peace to you. And then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, 
but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. We say together the words of the Benedictus. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. And so let us pray. Lord Jesus, as your people Help us, Lord, in all that we do and say to proclaim that you have indeed risen from the dead. We pray, Lord, for your creation. We pray, Lord, that the peoples of the earth may meet their responsibility to care for all that you have given to us. We pray for those who are in despair and darkness, that they may find the hope and light of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks this day, Father, for all the blessings that we have received at your hand. We thank you, Lord, for friends and for family. We thank you, Lord, for good health, for our homes, for the food that we enjoy. Throughout the world, Lord, though, there are so many who do not have those things. And so we pray for them this day. Lord, give them a sense of your peace, your comfort. Give us all, Lord, an awareness of our own responsibilities to look after those who are less fortunate than ourselves. We thank you, Father, for those who are praying with us today. We pray for those who are in lockdown, those who feel lonely, those who feel afraid and anxious. To those disciples, Lord, you said, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. May each person, Lord, watching this broadcast know and experience that peace that transcends all understanding. The peace, Lord, that guards our hearts and our minds. We pray, Lord, for those who are unwell, especially those who have contracted the virus. Surround them with your goodness, Lord. Stretch forth your hand to bring healing to them 
and may they and all their families and friends know your grace this day. We remember those whose anniversaries of death fall at this time, Lord, people that we love and miss. The Easter story, Lord, gives us hope that you have conquered death and that those who have died in your peace will live forever. And in a time of quiet, we just bring before the Lord our own thoughts and our prayers for people we know needed at this time. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection has delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Have a good day.